Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It is early. Good morning. 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 Good morning to you all. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. So I know everybody's still very much asleep. It is 5.01 here in Arizona, so it's still very early. But I wanted to get on and do a very a live, a live broadcast this morning to kind of get you to start your day, give you something to think about. Um, and it has to do with grieving in the body of Christ, grieving in the body of Christ. And so if you are on, go ahead and, and share this broadcast and if you're able to watch it later that's even better because you'll be able to take notes and i'm not going to be on here very long but i want to give you some information because what i'm perceiving and what i know is that in the body of christ we're not grieving properly we have not been grieving properly in the body of christ and so i want to give you some information about that. I'm going to give you some tools because um, if we do not grieve properly, then we're not moving forward properly. And if we're not moving forward properly, then possibly we're not reaching those levels that God has for us in the body of Christ. And so we need to go back to the root of the issue. We need to go back to, to square to level one and figure out what step did I overlook in my process. And so Today, I want this morning, real briefly, I want to talk to you about grieving in the body of Christ. Um, and so just getting started, I want to talk to you about um, the different types of grief, because grief does not always have to do with the death of a person. Grief has to do with, can have to do with the death of a person, but also it has to do with the death of an idea, the death of a relationship, the death of a marriage, grieving, a, a loss of a job, a loss of a career, loss of an environment, loss of an assault, your hopes and your dreams, so many things, loss of, of, of a church family, so many things that we grieve about, um, but oftentimes we're not doing it properly. And so what happens is in the body of Christ, there's this, there's this idea that we have to rush through our grief. We have to rush through our grief and we're not taking the time to grieve properly. We're not taking the time to process. So here's the thing about grief. Grief is more than just, um, this idea that time will heal our wounds. Um, this is not the idea that, you know, grief is not this idea that if we, if we go on, if we live long enough, then we'll get over it. Okay. Grief is a process. Grief is, is, is a step in our life that we cannot over look, okay? We have to go through the process. Now, most of the time when people, when I'm talking to people and even in myself, my personal experiences, many times we hear this thing where I really can't allow myself to grieve because if I go there, I won't come back from it. Many of us have said that because we don't want to feel the pain of grief. We don't want to feel the emotional pain that we have to go through if we actually grieve. So grieving is, part, a portion of grieving is saying, I'm actually acknowledging what happened to me. I'm actually acknowledging that this loss did happen. Okay. So very often we are um, encouraged, especially in the body of Christ, we are encouraged that, you know, we encourage to jump, jump through, get over it, get over it quickly. Um, and, and that's what we do. We put on this facade, you know, almost immediately after a significant loss, we want to show people, we want to show the world, we want to show family that we are strong, that we, that this thing did not take me under, that I'm going to get over this. But let me tell you something that that is not showing strength. Your, your inability to process the grief, your inability to acknowledge that this is what happened, that is not 
showing strength. And that is a misconception, especially in the body of Christ. And for that reason, we have people that the the incident, the loss happened years ago. And now years later, they are still stuck. We are still stuck. And we are not able to actively go forward and do what God has called us to do. You, if you're like me, you know that in this season, we're noticing a lot of of, of God is moving, God is building, God is opening doors for people, God is presenting people with opportunity. But still there's this, this small percentage of people who are unable to realize what God wants them to do because they are stuck because we are stuck on something that happened years ago that we did not take the time to process properly. The Bible says there is a time to mourn. And so we like to jump to that portion where it says there's a time to dance. We love to dance and we love we love that emotional fulfillment of dancing, but we don't like to sit down and process the grief. We don't like the mourning part. We don't like to go through that. We don't like we don't like how it feels and rightly so. So our, we do not want to feel pain. It is not in our nature to want to desire pain. And so we overlook that grieving process. But again, grieving is, portion of grieving is acknowledging that it did happen, acknowledging that this was a loss in my life. Okay. And, and part of acknowledging that this did happen is the good thing about it is acknowledging that it happened says that now I can develop a plan to move forward. But before we move forward, I have to acknowledge that it happened. I have to acknowledge what my part was in, was in on this loss. I have to, especially when it comes to a relationship, a loss of a marriage, I have to acknowledge this was my part in that loss. Okay. I have to acknowledge the guilt of the situation. In many, in many situations, especially when there's death of a loved one, a death of a parent, a friend, and maybe, um, it didn't end on good terms. Your last conversation with them was not on good terms. Then comes that guilt, that guilt and that we have to deal with. Now we know God does not bring guilt or condemnation. So we know that that guilt does come from Satan, but we still have to deal with it. We have to acknowledge what we're feeling and we have to combat that, that with the word of God. But the big thing is we have to do it. We cannot avoid it. And so our friends and our loved ones, because and, you know, and they're not trying to trying to short us of our process, but a lot of times our friends and our loved ones, they don't want to see us go through the pain and two, they, they can't take it. They can't take seeing us in pain. And, and, and the second part is they themselves don't know how to deal with what we're going through, especially if they've not been through it before. And so they are there as as, as great as, as much as possible, they are there. But then it, we all know that point where we get to where we sense the distancing from other people. Sometimes that can be them removing their themselves. And sometimes it can be our insecurity because we know the load that we're carrying is too hard for anyone to bear. And so what happens is we're avoiding grieving altogether. And listen, just, I said this on the video the other day, just like the Israelites had to circle that mountain time and time again. If we do not grieve properly in the body of Christ, that thing is going to come again. It may not come the exact same way, but listen, it's going to be apparent in your life that there are issues that have been unresolved is going to happen. It's going to show up. And so we have to make sure, and there's an opportunity for you to um, comment on this. If you have any questions, please do um, type those in because I'm going to, at the end of this, in about 15 minutes, I'm going to pop, I'm going to stop and I'm going to answer any questions about grief, especially in the body of Christ. We love to dance. We love to sing. We love, especially, you know, in, in, in times of loss, we like to, um, we like to circle ourselves uh, around people that have that energy. And as much as that, that's good for us and it's good to be around people with energy at the end of the day, we still have to go back and deal with that issue. Again, the Bible says there is a time to mourn. Now that time means a, a time and space. That doesn't mean that we overlook that. It's acknowledging that there is a time to mourn. And when we mourn, you know, listen, the Bible says that he will turn our mourning into dancing. It will happen. But listen, he cannot turn our mourning into dancing if we don't take that time to properly mourn, to properly grieve that loss that has been in our lives. 
And so again, the misconception in the body of Christ and in the church is that we show strength by immediately getting over that situation. We're not allowed to cry. We're not allowed, you know, they'll talk to us for about two weeks, but then they're like, get over it because they're tired of listening. And so we don't allow ourselves to properly mourn the thing that we're going through. And we have to be able to do that because it's going to come again. Listen, um, and I have a word from the Lord and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give it. The Lord has given me a word for those who are grieving. I'm going to give that, but listen, um, we have to be able to go through that process depending on the magnitude of the loss. Depend, hear me clearly, depending on the magnitude of the loss, grieving is just as important as breathing. Depending on the magnitude of the loss, I'm, I'm going to write that on the screen. Depending on the magnitude of the loss, and it won't let me it um, it won't let me write it all the way. So just bear with me. But um, okay, there we go. Depending on the magnitude of the loss, grieving is important as breathing. I want us to say as is just as important as breathing. But it is so true. You have to go through that process. Either you're gonna deal with it now or you're gonna deal with it later. Now that has to do with a divorce. And I've been through a divorce. It has to do with loss. I've lost a parent. It has to do with career. It has to do with environment. I've moved um, a couple of times. It has to do with loss of relationships, friendships, even loss of church family. If God has led you to move, to, to distance yourself from your original church family, that is a big loss in the body of Christ for pastors and leaders and clergy at large, losing members out of your church, losing congregations and your hopes and your dreams for what your congregation should have been like. Nobody starts a church thinking that they're going to have five and six members for 20 years. Nobody does that. When they start a church, they believe they have a word and they have a belief they have an anointing for that. And five and six years down the line, when there's not a lot of congregants in their church, that is a grief. That is a loss that is a loss of an idea they didn't know they had to spend a whole bunch of money on a on a church that that didn't profit so this is a loss um and then listen if anybody knows about loss if anybody knows about grieving it is the master it is the father he knows about grieving there is nothing that we can go through that god doesn't know what we're going through he, there is there is nothing that he himself has not experienced he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross from for us he he had to do that. Um, and Jesus himself had to grieve. He had to grieve in advance because listen, he knew what was going to happen to him. So how about that? How about when you're having to grieve and I'm going to try to slow down, but when you're having to grieve about something in advance, you know, it's coming. And so you're having to prep yourself. Um, Jesus said, Lord, if it be thy will to let this cup pass from me. So he knew that, knew that this was coming up. That That's very true for divorce, relationships, for moving, where we're grieving something in advance. And then there's times where we're grieving something that has not died. What happens when you're grieving something that is not dead? Okay, that's another grief that we are dealing with in the body of Christ, but we're not dealing with it properly. And so it is so important that we do go through this process, that we acknowledge that it happened, that we acknowledge our part in it. We acknowledge any guilt that we feel. We acknowledge any wrongdoings. And even if that's not in a public forum, that we acknowledge it within our heart between between you and God, you acknowledge that this is what happened. This is my part. I did this wrong. I did not handle this correctly. And sometimes you're at, it's, it's going back to that person, that person's still alive and asking for forgiveness. And sometimes it's just between you and God and asking God to forgive you for that and asking God to make it right in your heart. And so sometimes that's going to be a part of that grieving. Sometimes we're going to get angry with God 
and say, Lord, why did you have to do this for to me? Why did why did you have to take this situation from me? Why did you have to cause me to go through that loss? And sometimes your grieving process is going to be you getting it right with God. Job did that. Job went through the process of grieving. We we understand that Job worship. We know that we know that part of it. He fell down and worship, and he did not deny God. We know that, but we also see in those um, we know the first chapter of Job, but then there's a, a, about thirty some more chapters where we see the grieving process of Job. We see where his friends came in and tried to explain to him his own grief and tell him in so many words, "You did this wrong, or you did that wrong, or you did this, and this is why it's happening." And that's what friends try to do. They try to come in and they try to explain to us why it happened. They try to help us understand why it's happening. And sometimes they can be sincerely loving, but sincerely wrong at the same time. And so, um, you know, we, we have to go through that. We have to go through that process. So Job even had to battle it out with what, with what he felt about God at the time. He felt like, you know, I did everything I could. I made sacrifices for my children. I worship daily. I was a good husband. I was a good father. Lord, why is this happening? And not only was he, did he lose um, a, another point of grief is your your physical body going through a sickness. That's a grief. Um, that is very much a grief. So Job endured all of that. He had to go through that process. Very often we focus on that first chapter where Job fell down in worship. But what about those 30 other chapters where we go through that process where his friends were, were wanting to say something good to him, but ended up hurting his feelings? Like we get so many people that will tell us, you know, even when I went through my divorce, many people say, Said to me, God is going to bless you with another husband and he's going to do it right away. And so what do we do? We start looking for the next thing instead of processing the thing that we recently lost. We haven't processed and we all of a sudden we go and get in other relationships. We try to be distracted with work um, and whatever we throw ourselves into. But we will soon find that distractions are short lived and they do not produce the results that we want them to. OK, in dealing with grief, distractions and getting unhealthy or or otherwise distractions in your life, indulging in things to avoid feeling what you need to feel. It's only going to be short lived and it's not going to be effective. And it's possibly going to do more damage, depending on the situation, it's possibly going to do more damage to you than if you had just actually sat down, taken the time to deal with the grief that you need to deal with, okay? The important thing about grief also is a lot of people in the body of Christ, maybe because of your image, maybe because of your role in the church, maybe because of your leadership, um, maybe the, because of your, your, maybe you may be the patriarch of your family, your matriarch of your family, and you're, a lot of people are depending on you and you feel like you don't have a safe place to, to grieve. You feel like so many people are watching you and you need to be strong for them. And so you feel like you don't have that place to grieve in your life, that safe place to grieve. Well, let me tell you, that's what counselors are for. That's why we are here. That's what mental health coaches are for. We're here to provide you with a safe place. Place. Okay, so listen, counseling is not just someone all the time listening to you. Um, you know, we are we are trained people and there's so many techniques that we can use to help you help provide that safe place for you to grieve but not only that provide you with the, the understanding of what's happening to you physically mentally and spiritually if they're a faith-based person one technique that i can think of that i often use with people who are grieving is the empty chair technique where you sit in a chair and you and you talk to um that person that that you lost and you get Get out of your heart and your mind all the things that you maybe you didn't get a chance to say to them. You get to 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 express it. Yes, that person's gone, but it's just that modeling where you're able to get it off of your chest in a safe environment. Now, you may not be able to do that in the comfort of your, of your home. You may not be able to do that with your pastor or your first lady because they're not trained for that. But very often you can go to a counselor, you can go to a, a coach um, or integrated coach as I, as I refer to myself as because I, I provide mental health coaching, but I'm also a licensed counselor. So in my coaching, I 
implement all of the, the techniques that I would use as in my licensed counseling environment. So it's very good to find a, a, a coach for that because we are, we're not just people talking. We're not just people bouncing ideas, but we're trained in these things. We, we are trained in different techniques and how to help you process that grief. And so um, that is where God is really leading me in the body of Christ because we're not grieving properly. We're dancing our way through it, but we're not grieving. And that thing, we're having to circle that mountain time and time again. When God is saying, there is a time to mourn. And if you would take that time to mourn, God is a man of his, he's a God of his word. And he will for sure turn your mourning into dancing. He will do that. And But you have to take that time to mourn. But his promises are sure. He's going to bring you out. He's not going to put too much more on you than you can bear. You don't have to worry about that. But he does expect you to take take care of yourself and he expects you to invest in yourself. And so many times this is going to cost you some money to get a counselor. Your job, check with your insurance company, check with your job, find out what type of benefits they offer. Do they offer an employee assistance program where you can talk to a counselor? Sometimes it's best to talk to someone who doesn't know you personally, who doesn't know the ins and outs of your personal life. It's sometimes that that's better. It, it, it provides more of a safe environment. Um, so that may be necessary, but check with them. Check with your church. Do they offer a, par a pastoral counseling program or do they contract with someone that can come in and help you through your process of grief? God desires that we that we that we we prosper and be in good health. That is the desire of the Lord for us, mental health, physical health. And so we have to take those steps to prosper and be in good health. God is doing so much in this season and he desires that you would prosper, but you, he doesn't want you to be stuck on something that happened yesteryears because you never took the time to properly grieve it. Okay. And so um, that's what the Lord is saying. Um, and the Lord did give me a word. He gave me a word. Um, I was I was ministering a few weeks ago and the Lord said um, there was a young lady there who had lost her son. And the Lord said, um, as I was ministering to her, the Lord gave me this word. And he said that he said, don't be bitter with him. Um, he said, don't, he told me to tell her, don't be bitter with me. He said, the Lord said, I am the one that did this. I am the one that chose you to go through this loss. And that was a, a, a strange word that the Lord gave me. Um, but the Lord took me back to the book of Job, where the Satan said, he, Satan was wandering to and fro, looking, seeking the earth. And, and God said unto him, have you considered my servant Job? He walketh upright and he escheweth evil. And so the Lord gave me that word to give to that young lady that, that the Lord said, I am the one who did this. He said, don't be bitter with me. And so I'm one that the Lord gave me that to give to you today. And I don't know who it's for, but somebody, this is for the Lord says, don't be bitter with him. Don't be bitter with me, says the Lord. I am the one who did this. He said, because I knew you could be trusted. I knew you would not deny my name. I I knew you would walk upright. I knew you would still serve me. And I knew you would be a witness in the earth of my love and my grace for you. So the Lord says, don't be bitter with him. Do not, your name is not Mora. Your name is what the name I gave you. Don't be bitter with me because I chose you. He said, but after this, I'm going to turn your mourning into dancing. I'm going to restore everything that I lost. The Lord says, I sent the canker worm. I sent the palmer worm and I sent the locust. Not because you were a bad that person, but because I knew you could be trusted. And so I want you to continue to trust me even in this, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. And so I want to give that word to you that if you would just continue to trust him, the Lord says, I found you trustworthy to go through this. I knew you were strong enough. I found you to be trustworthy and I'm going to bless you before the, for the loss that you suffered. I am going to bless you. Even the Lord says, I'm going to restore unto you double and triple fold. He said, you just wait and see because you are, you did not deny my name through all of this. And so I want to encourage you that if you are going through some type of grief, if you're going through some type of loss, take the time to grieve properly. Take the time to heal properly. Many of us did not do that, you know, and, and I can be a witness. There were things that I went through that I did not take the time to grieve properly. And sure enough, that thing comes back 
back around. And not only then do you have to deal with the original grief, okay? Then you have to deal with all the mistakes you made after that because you didn't take the time to grieve, okay? And so I want to get on here and I want to do some more videos, but I wanted to get on here and, and talk to you about grieving. As you go into your Friday, um, you know, God doesn't want us to stay in our grief. There's a time to take off our morning clothes. There's a time to, to take off our, our, our sackcloth, our ashes. There's a time to wash ourselves off and get up and go. There is a time for that. Okay. There is a season for that. Okay. And God does not want us to stay in that place of grief. Don't think that if you start, you're not going to be able to leave that place. Listen, that's not true because, because what happens when we take that time to grieve, that, that pain, lessons over time. It does lessen lessons over time, but we have to acknowledge we can't put it back on the back burner and not deal with it, especially in the body of Christ when God has commissioned us to go out into the hedges and highways. And if we are ministering out of unresolved grief, if you are ministering out of unresolved grief, listen, you're going to do damage in the kingdom. You're going to do damage to the people that you're trying to, to, to work with. So, so be, a, be accountable, not only to this yourself, but to those people that you're going to be ministering to be accountable and get yourself help. Make sure that when you go out into the hedges and highway, when you go out into all the world to preach the gospel, make sure that you are doing it in a healthy way. I love you. God bless you. If you have any questions, if you have any questions, I'm going to, I don't see any too many comments right now, but if you have any questions, feel free to, to contact me. You can go to my website, www.faithsolutions to mental health. I'm going to put that up on the screen right now. And for those of you who are going to watch this later, share this with your friends and family, anyone that you know that is, um, that is going through some grieving just let them know that there are people here who are trained and who are anointed for this. It's solutions to mental health. All right. I have my website up on the, on the line. What I provide is integrated mental health coaching. So I am a licensed counselor, but I also provide mental health coaching. Um, and if you look on my website, there is an article there that talks about what is the difference between mental health coaching and counseling. You want to know what those differences are before you before you sign up for counseling or, men, or mental health coaching. You want to know what those differences are. So that is on my website. Um, there's an article called um, the difference between mental health coaching and and, and, and counseling. So I love you. God bless you. Enjoy your Friday. I have, it, it is still 527 here in Phoenix, Arizona. So I'm up early, but as you know, I'm a mother. So I have to get ready to get my, my kiddos up for school, but let me know if you have any questions, something for you to think about. And if you feel that you've gone through some, some losses and you've not dealt with it properly, reach out to me. I, if I can't help you, then I'm sure can, I sure can point you in the right direction. Go to my website, make it appointment or, or just give me a call for, for a brief consultation. I love you. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.